Yeah. Welcome to the Morris Essex Sports Talk Show. I am your host, George Muha, and thank you so much for tuning in. And this is a daily talk show that we do every day from 3 to 5 p.m. with myself and the lovely Karen Muha, who is joining in right now. And uh, we're really excited to have you. Hey, Karen, you're on mute, so unmute yourself. Hi, George. And uh, Karen, we are- Love in, your enthusiasm. <laughs> we are in week seven of COVID-19 quarantined Morris Essex Sports Talk Show, where we interview all the players, coaches, and teams. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what it feels like. Uh, it does. Everybody feels like that, I'm sure. Everybody's getting a little antsy and, and uh, understandably- Yeah, all you sleep doctors, call us, tell us what to do. Yeah, one of the biggest things is uh, insomnia. Um, just crazy. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot about that. <laughs> yeah, hearing it, experiencing it, the, the whole gamut. <laughs> uh, and, you know, if this is anybody's first time joining us for the Morris Essex Sports Talk Show, thank you for tuning in. Again, I'm George Muha. This is Karen Muha. And we are, every day, we host this show from three to five. And if this is your first time joining us for any kind of Morris Essex Sports production, 
thank you for tuning in. And just to let you know, Morris Sussex Sports is a 14-year-old media company that provides coverage of, for 40 high schools in Morris, Sussex, and parts of Warren County. We basically cover the NJAC. We do all kinds of stuff, articles, special features, special interest stories, video highlights, podcast interviews, um, and of course, live stream play-by-play -play broadcasts. And uh, those are a lot of fun. Everyone loves those. And uh, I want to get a hold of all the unified coaches. I want them to call me. Yeah. I want to get all those kids involved. I, just, I want to do. I want to do a Zoom with uh, some of those teams too. Yeah. I've reached out to one. He hasn't gotten back to me. He's in trouble. <laughs> in fact, I just got a message from one of his players today asking if we heard back. So uh, I said, try to push. All right, him I got to try harder. Yeah, I'm we gonna do have, it. I love when we do the shows where we have everybody on at one time you know like the last week we had I forget who what maybe sparta we had i think there's 22 people on at one time it was a blast Those i know are... we're gonna have coach regan back because now he is the head coach of newton and he's got nine seniors that are graduating and i would love to have all nine of those kids on yeah 100%. yeah because i want to honor those kids i bet they got some great stuff to say I get there. I bet they're completely ready for one game just to take them down. <laughs> is that what you say? Yeah, they all. That's what everyone's saying. And you know what? That's what this is really for—to to highlight take them the, down, highlight the seniors that are kind of missing out at the time being. There was a press conference today. If we're going to go a little news, we might as well because uh, Governor uh, Murphy was on and he was talking about a plan for opening up and and doing it in a safe manner. Of course, everybody's anxious, especially. Uh, from a high school sports standpoint, but he didn't. He I might say something about school sports. Did you? No, but he didn't cancel it, which I was really encouraged by that. Think he didn't cancel school or end school or say school is going to be online for the rest of the year. But what he did was laid out a, a kind of a, a plan with no dates of for reopening and reopening safely. And I guess that's that's very important, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess, you know what you got to say, everybody should be wearing masks. He didn't call them masks, which I thought was funny. He called them coverings. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm, doing, I'm running down to the store sometimes with a bandana on my face. Yeah. Sometimes I got a scarf on my face. We also are selling some, masks. what are they called? Coverings, <laughs> masks, Morris Sussex, the Morris Sussex strong. sports masks. They're come on, tell everybody. I'm, I'm yeah, sorry. They're Morris Sussex sports. They're, they're masks that uh, provide cover up. We've already sold the butts. It's going to end. Yeah, but in... who makes them? <laughs> Excuse me. Jeez, destination athlete of North Jersey. Um... Destination athlete, exactly. You can yeah. buy one from them. I want to say they cost 15 bucks. They do say more Sussex Sports on them, which is actually a lovely way to kind of advertise us. More but all the strong. benefits. It says, says more Sussex Strong. Oh, it says more Sussex Strong? Yeah, it's real cool. More Sussex Strong, American flag on the other side. So cool. So good. And, yep. And all the proceeds are going to go towards uh, supporting um, maybe those unfortunate who aren't able to feed themselves and stuff in, uh, in, our, in our community. Um, so it's for a good cause too. And you're supporting yourself, covering yourself. So I want to say big, big thank you. Lots of prayers for all the people on the front lines in hospitals, all the nurses and doctors. Yep. So many that we're honoring on our site. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. We love you in a way. It's so easy to say that, right? You know, big hug to you guys. Oh, right. Such a tough, such a tough job. I know. Um, did a little work with cancer patients as a volunteer after I lost my father. And boy, I feel like I know a tiny bit of what you did while you had a chance to see people in great need. I'll say that. Yeah. And you know what's cool is we've been highlighting a lot of those parents that are out there uh, working um, on the front lines. And then a lot of alumni so there's a lot of alumni that we're also honoring these kids that go to morris knowles and kid of titty and and roxbury they're like a year out of high school uh, but they're working in hospitals or working as emts and stuff um which is really really cool and all the parents like these parents are yeah and anybody who's shut in who can't cook or can't go to the grocery store 
Anthony Pasquarella is happy to shop for you guys. He's happy to cook too. He'll cook anything you want. And uh, that is just, you know, the way it is today. A lot of people doing some really good work, just trying to help out, be a part of, um, provide in any way they can. So don't forget that Pasquarella brothers, they're in Chatham. They're also in Morristown. If you need groceries or you need food, everything they make, by the way, is gluten-free as well. So please, please don't forget that. The other guys I absolutely love are OINJ. Um, some of my favorite guys in the world. I'm waiting to hear from Dr. Kevin White. Dr. Kevin White, I hope you're safe and well. I hope your family's safe and well. Um, I miss uh, not saying hi to... Um, who else is one of my favorites over there? Uh, Ivy Rehab. You got Eric Eric Anders. Er, I'm sorry, Eric Armstrong. Eric Armstrong. We just saw him. So great to see him. Love CCM. Kathleen and Tony. They were on our show a couple weeks ago, and I reached out to one of their interns because I'm going to do a little story about moms going back to school. Such a wonderful idea. Yeah. Love to get. That's a great way to get your head in the game, especially after you've been home like me. I don't know about you guys, but I've never cooked so much. I've never done more laundry. I've never been bossed so much. And you know what? I'm sick of it. <laughs> but naturally, I love having my kids home. I love doing stuff for these guys. I love cooking. And I'm, not, I'm not loving cooking and cleaning. The other day, I said the maid quit. And then she came back, you know. Um, but seriously it's great to uh i want to send a lot of love out there to parents you know i know everybody's working overtime with kids being at home and we're, we're getting a little shut in but we're, do, we're doing our best yeah yeah can't wait to have some of our other guys back like european wax uh judy cook she's gonna have first wax free it's gonna be like several different areas she's gonna do free that's gonna be great they're in denville and Parsippany and Sekasena. Okay. And then also, you know who else is um, a modern acupuncture? Joan Arata from Florham Park. This week, she's going to put out something for um, like Mother's Day. So she can, she's oh. going to, people get oh, like nice gift cards, you know, acupuncture, which is really great. It's a nice, you know, a real uh, inexpensive way to uh, give your mother some love. Tons of you guys, too. Let's talk about the National Football Foundation. Tons of you kids must be familiar with the National Football Foundation. Okay, yeah. Such so a here's... wonderful honor to be recognized as, an, uh, as a national scholar athlete. We have 38 kids this year. Is that right? So here's the update on uh, the scholar athlete banquet. So we were going to have a banquet. It's the nicest banquet for high school sports in the area, 100%. It's put on by the National Football Foundation, which is... Uh, you know, Archie Manning is the chairman of that group. And this is the more the Greater Morris uh, chapter, which highlights all the same schools that we cover. Um, and it's the football team. So it's all 37 high school football teams plus FDU. There's always an FDU person. Um, we were supposed to have it in April. We rescheduled it for May. It was going to be at the Madison Hotel. The kids get in there, black, get in a tuxedo. It's a great event. event. So what we're doing, um, you know, we're on the board. So what we're doing is instead of, uh, you know, the board got together and said, hey, let's, instead of just mailing kids plaques, we still got to honor these guys. We always do it the right way. So we're going to do it online. We're going to do it through Zoom. And it's going to be a highly produced. So cool, right? Yeah. And it's not just going to be on Zoom. It's going to be very produced. It's going to flow really good with the everything that we do live. I want to be on it, but I'm not going to be on it. Um, I don't know why. Why am I not on it? Yeah, you can be on it. I'm not on it either. <laughs> but um, as we were saying, um, you know, it's going to be online, very produced. There's going to be bagpipers, piano players, all the kids, the scholar Great. athletes, awards. We're going to honor a uh, famous uh, Joe Piscopo, who uh, the kids probably don't even know who that is, but I know the parents do. <laughs> and quite a few other people coach Henley's going to get a big honor um so that's gonna be a lot of fun and uh even today I mean, i'm looking forward to today's show too because today we have we have, we've talked about this team for the entire seven weeks we've been doing this 
and it's the first time we're going to have them. Del Barton lacrosse uh, coach. How many kids are on today? I think we're going to have three kids, three athletes, and coach uh, Matt Kovacek, um, who's been there two years. And that program is a, is a program. And, uh, you know, he took over that program. I think he has two losses <laughs> in two years. Wow. And, uh, you know, that'll be a lot of fun because we've been talking about all the programs in our area. Everybody knows when it comes to lacrosse. It's Del Barton, it's Mountain Lakes, and then it's everybody else. So, uh, you know, it's going to be fun talking to them and, you know, hearing from their perspective. We've been talking to all the other teams and how they've been talking about how Del Barton is, you know, just such a great program. Um, so now we're going to be able to talk to, to the guys. And a lot of these kids. Three seniors we have? I believe so. I believe so. Coaches wow. setting it up. And uh, I'd be curious. A lot of those kids go on to play. Like, they've gone on to Duke and – North Carolina and some big programs. So I don't even know who's going to be on, but we're going to find out. And it's, it's always fun to hear where they're going to college and stuff like that. Um, what else? What else can we talk to say about moms? Moms are such a big part of this. Um, okay, moms. I have the best idea for moms. Moms, go take a class at CCM. It's in our backyard. Or go take a class at Sussex. Is it Sussex Tech? Community Sussex College, Community College not to... Sussex Community College. Yep. It is the best idea in the whole world. And I'll, I'm going to tell you why. First of all, it's like going back to school, but this time you're going to take something that you, that you love, that you're interested in taking. And every single Wednesday or everything, every single Tuesday, Thursday at that time, it's going to be a special time just for you. You can, you can be like, no, I'm not cooking. No, I'm not doing that today. I'm going to school. <laughs> I absolutely love doing it. I thought I was going to, I thought maybe it might be where with me and like the younger kids. It was great. I took a creative writing class. I kind of learned how to write. I actually love some of the stuff I did write. And I thought it was awesome. I really did. I can't wait to go back. I'm going to take an intro to journalism class. I might take do something in performing arts. I kind of like, I'm a little bit of a ham. But just to have the chance to have my own time, to do my own thing, to use the other side of my brain, how great is that? It's, so yeah. I can't encourage you enough, you guys. Go take a class, especially after class, this. You took a class last year. Was it hard to like take a class and do the homework and all that? No, it wasn't hard at all. It was not? No, but then I'm also a certified, you know, water instructor. So I have a, I, this semester, I did all the CE, CE work for that. Because I have to keep up with my water certifications. I teach people how to stay fit in the water who've been through like surgeries, uh, have arthritis or MS. So that has been a, a very rewarding experience as well. Um but no, would Were you ask me? I, and now I'm not even answering the question. What? Are the CE classes hard? No, I don't think they're hard at all. You know what I like too? Like the, especially like if, when you're going back like that, all you have to do is if you ask a question or you don't know how to do something, you can see a professor. I could see this guy. I could call him on the phone or I could email him. And he just set me up to win. And guess what? I got an A. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. And that's like, a that felt so good too. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Um, well, listen, uh, you know, that's a good plug, especially for CCM and Sussex County College. There's just big resources in our neck of the woods. Well, you know, Rutgers is right there too, but I feel like it's like not as close. Um. Well, you know, you could go to CCM and not even leave the Randolph CCM campus. You are and, absolutely right about and that. And get a, get a full degree from uh, Rutgers. That's know. absolutely true. And especially now with this time, hopefully we can just jump back, start getting the economy cooking. But I'm afraid there's going to be a lot of people looking for. And, and right in our backyard, too, is Keene, who opened up that environmental center. Yep. Yeah. Right? They did. So we, we should go tour that. That's a great spot too. Yeah. Well, they listen. They got some great programs there too. Um, again, I'm excited about this particular show because we got Del Barton. So I'm going to tell you. We'll 
we're going to tell you a little bit about them, Karen, okay, just to get you up to speed. I know I know you like Del Barton. Is, is Del Barton called the Green Wave no matter what? Like, no matter whether it's football, soccer, or lacrosse? No matter what. They're always the Green Wave. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to tell you, um, I think in 18, when Matt Kovacek took over the game, he had one loss. Um, and I, I believe he won the Morris County tournament. I know that. And then I think he won the, the tournament of champions. Um, and then last year they lost, no, they won them. They won the Morris County tournament and then Mountain Lakes beat them in the tournament of champions to advance. But I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think Kovacek has two losses in two years, which is pretty incredible. Um, and don't get me wrong. I mean, he's, he, he has a tremendous, Del Barton has a, is a tremendous lacrosse team. But what I'm looking forward to kind of talking to him about is like, how do you have these two powerhouses in the area? Um, you have Del Barton, which is a private school. Is everybody afraid of Del Barton? Uh, Mountain Lakes isn't. <laughs> They're not afraid of them. They're just so good. You know what I mean? Who beats Del Barton? <laughs> well, Mountain Lakes. Mountain Lakes does? Mountain Lakes can beat them. I mean, they beat them last year. And what's interesting about that is Mountain Lakes is a group one school, which means they're the smallest school, small size school in the state. So they have a smaller group of kids to pull from. But the coach Tim Flynn over there has just built this lacrosse program. So these kids grow up like back in the 60s, everyone was throwing around baseballs in Mountain Lakes. If you drive through Mountain Lakes, you, I know you've seen it. Everybody has those goals in the back or those backstops in the backyard. Everybody, like every house has that. So these kids grow up wanting to play lacrosse for Mountain Lakes. And uh, again, they don't have big classes. They have, I think they're under 200 people per class, um, which is really unbelievable what they're doing. Del Barton, I mean, just being a powerhouse at Del Barton is, is impressive, but their approach is a little different. You know, there's the private kids are coming from all these different towns. Usually they're the, you know, the top athletes from each town. So, uh, but still, even what they're doing is incredible. But having these two powerhouses in our county is really kind of unprecedented. Did Del Barton beat Chatham? Uh, interesting enough, yes, they, they, they did beat Chatham. But last year's first year, his one loss was to Chatham. So they beat they beat Mendham too. I don't know if they played Mendham. Um, I don't know if they played. I'll tell you right now. But I know last year at eighteen, uh, their only loss, I believe, was only to uh, to Chatham. And then the next year, um, they pretty much ran the table. They lost to somebody. Um, they, I know they lost to Mount Lakes in the tournament champions. Let's see. Let me see. Let's just get lacrosse. You still with me? You there? No, you can't. You got I got, a, I got, I got, a, I got a few right. kids in the background. Okay. <laughs> All right. Matt Kovacek is coming on here. We're going to bring him on here in just a second. I'm going to pull up their schedule just so we have it. Um, I was scoping this thing out the other day. Um, Anyhow, but I'm excited to have them on. So I'm going to, I have Matt Kovacek on. I'm going to bring him on here. I know he's expecting some teammates, but we'll bring him on, uh, warm him up, make sure all the audio and video is on there. So, uh, hey, Matt, can you hear me? Good, George. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Good. Thanks for uh, having us on today. Yeah, of course. Of course. You're the first one. So I figured I'd bring you on. Um, and I'll just, yeah, keep... they're, they're coming. The boys are coming. Okay, cool. Just, I'll give you some intros. I'm George Muha, of course, and uh, we have Karen Muha too with more Sussex Sports. How are you, Matt? Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm okay. How are you doing? Good, thank you. So, Coach, how's we're gonna have three boys on? You said right? Uh, yeah, CJ Kirst, Cole Krause, and Tommy Jepson. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, those guys. You, know, you know Tommy, right? Yeah, we know Tommy, and uh, we also uh, Kirst. We gave him the, the player of the, the week last year. Oh, good. That's right. That's right. Whenever he came by, and uh, yeah. So how's things going? You, uh, you must be itching to get out there, no? Yes. I mean, they're, they're going well, as well as you can expect. Um, mm. You know, we're obviously, uh, 
you know, just trying to just trying to navigate the the day to day ups and downs of uh, the last couple of weeks. Mm. And, yeah, uh, I, I feel like everybody's doing the best they can with what they've got on their plate. I, I think that's pretty much it. You know, it's um, you know, I think the the students, you know, any boys or girls who are you know just so out of their daily routine, you know, waking up and getting on the bus and going to school, at, you know, seven forty five till two thirty and then to practice and then homework at night, uh, just they're, they're more unsettled than I think we are as adults. <laughs> are, is the Barton doing the online learning thing? Are you, are you a teacher there too? We do. I teach freshman history and I'm also the freshman guidance counselor. Okay. How's that going? Do you guys make that transition? Or what? Okay. Uh, you know, we, this happened um, right at the tail end of our second week of spring break. So we we're able to bring the boys back on that Monday um, and, and really, you know, it's, I think we're week five, uh, halfway through week five or six. And, um, you know, I, I would say all in all, the boys have transitioned well. Um, you know, we're, we're not without our challenges, just like every, every school is. Uh, but I think for the most part, uh, we've been fortunate. Uh, you know, we have a, a strong faculty and great administration and, and uh, awesome families that have, that have worked with us. And, and uh, you know, we've been lucky. So, Coach, you, this is your second year there, right? Or, or... Uh, no, I was. Uh, I started in 2000, fall 2000. Oh. Uh, so oh. I was uh, assistant under Chuck Rubling for 17 years, and this is my third year as head coach. Okay, that's what I mean. Third, yeah. Okay, uh, third year. Okay, your your uh, your guys are coming in. We'll bring them in as they pop in here. Awesome. <laughs> um, we got Cole. We got Tommy. So let me see. All right, there they are. What's up, boys? How are you? Hey, how are you? How are All you? right. Hi, guys. Uh, Hi. Nice to see you. You too. You too. Nice to meet you. All right. Bear now, with can me. I recognize you guys? You know Tommy Jepson from Men to Man. Good to see you, pal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So here we. It looks like we have everybody. This is everybody, right, Coach? Yes. Okay. So hey, guys, I want to welcome you. Um, we have Cole Krause, Tommy Jepson, CJ Kirst, and of course, Coach Matt Kovacek from, from Del Bar and Lacrosse. We can't thank you enough for joining us. Just so you guys know, I'm George Muha with Morris Essex Sports, and we also have Karen Muha with Morris Essex Sports. And uh, Hi, guys, we, we uh, normally, you know, we do all kinds of coverage for high school sports, but we're kind of, we're all quarantined here. So this is our seventh week of doing a daily talk show. We're interviewing all the players and coaches and, uh, you know, we, we're trying to love on the spring sports as much as possible since you guys are so far, um, uh, the season has been delayed and hopefully it stays that, you know, stays delayed and not canceled. We get out there, but I'm just uh, curious, but maybe we'll go around the horn and, um, uh, you know, see how you guys are doing and you guys have been itching to get out there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, ever since our season was postponed, uh, we kind of, took a step back and we really uh, kind of rejoined as a class and as a team. But, you know, this preseason was kind of big for us and we were really excited to get out there with everybody. And it's just kind of unfortunate that we didn't get that opportunity. Mm. Yeah. Um, how about you, you, Tommy and Cole? Um, kind of just been doing as much as I can. Um, was trying to like get on the fields until those finally closed, but um, pretty much just trying to do anything I can like at home and like, just working out and like hitting the wall, trying to just stay sharp for this year, hoping that we can come back. Yeah, um, I would say I'm doing most of the same stuff as that. And we're all trying to reach out to uh, the other guys on the team, mostly younger guys. And, you know, just keep in touch and just see if anything's new and uh, check in on what they're doing, uh, like their progress. Because, you know, you can't see them every day. So, you know, it's good to keep in touch. Yeah, that's cool. So you guys are seniors. Can you... Can, can you tell us uh, what the plans are for next year? If you're playing, if you're playing, where you're going to school? Yeah, uh, I plan to play lacrosse at Cornell next year. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, all wow, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to be playing yeah, lacrosse. Congratulations. At, uh, Sorry, you. Tommy, what'd you say? I'm going to be playing lacrosse at Boston University next year. Oh, Sorry. good, good. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to Duke next year for lacrosse, so. Ah, that's yeah. awesome. Wow, you guys, that's how many, super. How many Thanks, seniors? Yo, how, how many seniors on the team? We have uh, twenty senior players and three senior managers. So, class of twenty-three. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and how everybody, many everybody's a senior. 
<laughs> no underclassmen on the team. Yeah, we have a, we have a few of them too. <laughs> How many of the um, seniors are going on to play lacrosse, Coach? Uh, I think it's about ten. Is that right? Is that right, boys? Ten or eleven? Uh, uh, something like something that. Like that yeah. right? Okay. Sounds Are any of, any of them joining you guys at the same schools? No. 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 Unfortunately not. Okay. Um, so listen, guys, we've been doing this for seven weeks, like I mentioned. We've interviewed a lot of lacrosse teams, and um, every one of them says just about the same thing in that, you know, the way you look at Morris County lacrosse, you have Del Barton, and you got Mountain Lakes, and then you kind of have everybody else, you know what I mean? And not that the everybody else are no slouches either. I mean, it's a lot of those, we have some top tier lacrosse in our area. Um, but, uh, you know, coach, what do you say about, uh, you know, the, the level of play that Del Barton and, and Mountain Lakes, it seems like, you know, there's, you guys are kind of neck and neck a little bit. Um, what do you say about the level of uh, lacrosse just in our backyard? Yeah, thank, uh, thank you. I, I, I think I'd agree with you. The level of play in Morris County is very deep. Uh, in Sussex County as well. There's really a number of uh, strong teams that have developed over the years. Uh, as, I, as I said, when, uh, when I came on, you know, I've been in, been in the state since uh, the early 2000s and, and really the depth in, in the Morris County tournament, for example, is just, it's awesome. It's great to be a part of. Uh, you know, it's fun playing Mountain Lake. They're, you know, one of the top public schools in the state year in and year out. They're coached by a you know, legendary coach and, and one of the fathers of New Jersey lacrosse. And um, you know, it's always a great game we play. We have a, a ton of respect for them and, um, you know, enjoy, enjoy seeing them. If it's once a year, last year, we had the opportunity to see them three times and you know, they got us at the end of the year in the TFC final, but, um, you know, it's always, always a good game when we play and, and, uh, always a, always a nice rivalry to continue. Uh, yeah. I mean, coach, there's a lot of teams in New Jersey too. I mean, is there, is there a team that you kind of look at every year as kind of like that big rival? Yeah, I, I think we look at every team as a big rival. You know, we try to worry about ourselves. Um, you know, certainly you have Mountain Lakes, you have Summit, you have Chatham, uh, you have Seton Hall Prep on the non-public side, uh, St. Augustine Prep down south. We played a number of times over the last couple of years. Um, you know, you have uh, all the Bergen, all the uh, non-publics in Bergen are, are much better and getting better by the year and year in and year out. Um, schools like, you know, Pingree. And uh, again, as, as you kind of get through the regular season and then into the postseason, uh, you know, you start to come across uh, a lot of the notables. Um, and, and we've been fortunate enough to, to play so many of those great programs over the last few years. And mm. we're fortunate to have a, a great uh, relationship with a number of out-of-state teams as well. Malvern Prep and St. Anthony's and Chaminade from Long Island. Uh, maybe the you know, one of the biggest disappointments of this season, we had added uh, Landon School from D.C. and St. Sebastian's from Massachusetts to our schedule. And we we're looking forward to, to playing them and uh, you know, going up against them on the field. But unfortunately, that was obviously cut short. Are they big programs, Coach? They are. They're both uh, – St. Sebastian's is one of the better uh, better non-public teams in, in Massachusetts. Um, and Landon's a, a really great, uh, you know, great athletic program and great program from the D.C. area. Okay. And, guys, I'll kick it over to you, you players. You know, why do you – what is it about Del Barton that every year – I mean, for the – every year you look back, I mean – you may have a one or two or three losses tops and, uh, um, and you guys are just like the premier program in the area. What is it about Del Barton program that is just so lights out every year? Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. It starts with our coaching staff. Uh, they, uh, they know how to, what, uh, to put us in the position to succeed. And, uh, you know, they really make, make, uh, playing with each other a lot of fun and I couldn't be happier, uh, being able to suit up with a group of guys, uh, that I have been able to for the past couple of years. Mm. Yeah, we obviously paid CJ to, to talk, you know, to say that. <laughs> CJ, what position do you play? I play attack. Kind of curious what, what positions the other guys play too. I, I play defense and LSM. Mm. And I'm also an attackman with CJ. Okay, that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious, you know, coach, what – this year specifically, look, we still have, it's still not in the tank. So we're going to still, you know, we're still going with that. I mean, everybody wants to get out there. Right. Um, what specifically were you guys bringing this year? I mean, last year you got edged out at the end, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, again, you got 20 seniors coming. What, what was the vibe? What were you guys thinking uh, you were hoping to accomplish? 
Well, I think uh, we, have a, we had a lot of depth on paper, uh, and as CJ alluded to in his in his uh, opening remarks, there, you know, we had a, we had a good couple of days of preseason, uh, and things were really really starting to click and come along. And I think uh, most most notable this senior class is just their sense of brotherhood, you know, and their sense of connection to each other. Uh, and we've certainly one of our strengths over the years, but this group is a very very tight group, uh, from seniors down to the underclassmen, and. You know, oftentimes in those tough moments throughout the season, that those bonds are what what carries you through. So, um, you know, I was looking forward to continuing to watch that grow on the field and obviously see our individual players develop and, and come together as, as a team as well. Mm. I mean, how about you guys from a player perspective? You know, you get you get to Kane College last year. You don't get the outcome that you want, but, you know, you got 20 seniors coming back. What was that like bus ride coming home? Were you guys looking at each other saying like, hey, we have some unfinished business? Um, what's that like for you guys? Um, from that was definitely, uh, that's definitely like a touchy subject. Like it, it was a tough bus ride home for sure. And I mean, I think a lot of people were thinking about the loss, but, um, and it kind of took a while to get over, honestly, but we all, I think every, all the seniors this year bought into, uh, bought into the system and, um, we grinded over like the uh, like the fall and the winter. <clears throat> Sorry, and I think we were like really ready to go this year, and we kind of had that mentality like um, we're gonna like come back and bring it back home. But you know, we never, got, unfortunately, never got to show what we had. So, mm. uh, how about you, Coach? Like when you look at this season, you have the conference, you have the Morris County tournament. Um, and then you also have the state tournament. Do you guys kind of like, how do you look at the season? You break it down and are those individual goals? Is there, is there more to it than that? Well, I think, uh, you know, we all, there's, you know, as you said, kind of different, maybe thirds to the season, you know, you have your regular season and, you know, we, we, again, we try to look at it from maybe a week to week or even a month to month basis and just worry about, you know, the, the couple games that are in front of us. Uh, and then there is a, a little season inside the season of, the county tournament, um, you know, and you're really, you're guaranteed one game. And if you win, you get to play another. Uh, and so, you know, we hope to play all four games in the counties, uh, but you never know. And, and again, it's, it's a deep county tournament. And uh, there's certainly been, been some very good teams that we've come up against over the last couple of years. So, you know, again, we take that one day at a time. And, and then when we generally a, a game or two of the regular season after the counties, and then we're into the state tournament. And again, it's, uh, you know, one and done. Um, you know, you hope to win your first game and just keep moving. And uh, then if you're fortunate enough and, and lucky, you get to compete in the TSC final and or TSC tournament, excuse me. And then if you're if you're fortunate, the TSC final. And at that point in time, you know, it's it's, uh, you know, the bus ride home was tough last year. But at the end of the day, we're you know, we're one of the last two teams standing. And that that's always one of our goals, um, you know, and it's uh, it, it's a fun it's a fun journey. And uh, watching these boys grow and develop as, as young men and players and, and come together and, and hopefully at the right time is, is so rewarding. Um, so. How, how about you guys from like a player perspective? I mean, you got that Morris County tournament. I, you know, sometimes I joke before the season, I'm like, I already know what two teams are going to be in there. Um, do you guys start, do you guys look at it that way? I mean, do you guys, are you thinking TOC all the way? Like what's your, what's the thought process from a Del Barton player's perspective? I think that we're just so like we're fortunate enough that we play a lot of great teams like around the state and outside the state that it's really hard to start looking forward to the end of the year because like at least once or twice a week you got a really good team ahead of you that we have to prepare for. So um, I don't think we're like we look too far in advance except we always have that goal in our head that that's where we want to be by the end of it. But since we have such great competition that we play we kind of have to focus on like what's right ahead of us. Mm. Yeah, um, and each game will build up to like a, a bigger game. So you get, you know, you got to prepare for each game. Yeah, I mean your schedule is no slouch schedule. So you you're right. I mean each game is going to be uh, you know ultra ultra competitive. Um, what, what about uh, coach? Maybe I'll kick this over to you. The, the NJSIA has not canceled sports, and you know um, the NBA canceled everything. You know. Uh, and NCAA has canceled everything pretty quickly, but the NJSIA has kind of hung in there a little bit and said, hey, we're, we'll, we'll expand to June 30th. Um, we may not even have a state tournament, but we'll still let the teams play if we're able to get back on the field. What kind of message that do you think that sends to the, to really the, the, the young 
scholar athletes that are out there playing. I, I, I like the message. I'd rather postpone than cancel, uh, you know, and, and obviously as you get more information, um, you know, then, then they can make accurate decisions. Uh, obviously everybody's health and safety is of the utmost importance. Um, but, you know, to have that opportunity and, that, and for these boys to have the opportunity to maybe put on the uniform, uh, you know, maybe one more time or a few more times, you know, who knows, but the opportunity to play together would be great. Um, and so I, I like, you know, I'd prefer to be optimistic than pessimistic. And so I like the opportunity of potentially, you know, taking the field again, um, you know, that'd be, that'd be awesome. You guys, does it sound, does it feel like it's realistic? You guys, do you think it's a possibility that you could be out there again? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, as a program, we definitely keep in touch, uh, trying to be productive every day. So when we do get that opportunity, we'll be ready. And, you know, we're just trying to keep our hopes but high. DJ, you feel like it's going to happen? Yeah, we're you definitely trying like to keep our happen? hopes high. Yes. Oh, God, good. Hope you so. got to love that. Yeah, hope so. Hoping for the best. <laughs> we are, hey, you guys, we are doing this for you because we feel like that too. You know, we love talking to everybody about like, what's your workout right now? Like, what are you guys doing? I mean, tell, I would love to know. Like, do Whoa. you guys exercise as a team? it was really cool we heard from some teams actually that like like do like zoom meetups or google meetups yeah i think one thing that's pretty cool with us is we do uh team yoga so we uh get together once a week to do yoga on sunday but um for me personally i'm fortunate enough to just have a little weight room in my basement and uh i have my brothers at home who are pushing me so uh yeah i'm able to get stuff done at home <laughs> what about you tommy what are you doing how, how are you stay fit um, I'm lucky enough to, I like have some weights in my garage so I can get some like full workouts in and like try to keep doing that, maintain that, um, definitely do what we do the zoom yoga every single Sunday. So we get to do something as a team there, but, um, also just trying to run and like, I guess, run around like the roads at my house and on the treadmill, just trying to stay in shape. Cole, you too? Yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty familiar. Um, also trying to get outside more, get some fresh air, get on the wall and, uh, you know, just shoot around. So let me ask you a question. Like if I said to you guys, okay, can you get out there and run five? Could you do it? Uh, you know, what? <laughs> five miles? Yeah, five miles. Uh, maybe, Probably. yeah, if I put my mind okay, to it. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> tell you why I'm asking you. I'm gonna tell you why I'm asking you. So we had a coach on last week who's a lacrosse coach. And he said that he could run five with his daughter, who's a sophomore. And I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. It inspired me to go out there to see. And then I told my son, who's a junior, I was like, could you run five? And he's like, no, I don't even want to. And then the next day, he's out there trying to run five. And he did. Hmm. And I wouldn't say it was easy because five miles is pretty, pretty big run, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a doozy. Yeah, we try to do the uh, timed one mile and like get our time as low as possible. But um, I know we've been doing that a lot. Yeah, because I think lacrosse is such a big endurance sport, right? <laughs> I mean, you're moving. Yeah. 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 So that's like the important piece, I guess, about like getting back out there, at least some of the doctors and some of the orthopedic uh, trainers, you know, and uh, coaches that we've talked to, they just talk so much about the importance of staying fit, you guys, so that like when you do do it, that you're ready, you know, you're ready to go, even if it's one game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah would that, satis good job would that, that satisfy you guys? Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Better than nothing. Yeah. You know, this, uh, this class has been great. You know, they've, uh, they've divided the entire team into small groups that includes, you know, seniors to freshmen. Uh, so the entire program uh, and, and they're in touch with those teammates daily. And, you know, we have, as Tommy alluded to, we have some kind of daily goals we try to hit. And you know, I think one of the things we were talking to George when I first came on was just the emotional, uh, you know, the mental side of this. And, and these guys have a little bit of schoolwork to do and, uh, certainly everybody's concerned with their family health and well-being and uh, extended families and neighbors and just trying to get outside, as, as Cole said, and get a little exercise in and, uh, you know, challenge yourself and challenge your teammates and hopefully keep the keep the sword sharp and keep another another shot on the field. Yeah, that's great. 
you know, I'm just on that front as, as far as health is concerned. I know, uh, yeah, Lucas Unger was a great, tremendous athlete. He played, he plays lacrosse too. Was he going to be out there this year? Hey, Lucas, I believe Lucas had decided to run track. Uh, you know, oh, he's got a, he, he has a scholarship to Stanford. And yeah. um, so I think he was trying to best prepare his legs for, uh, for that next chapter of his life. Okay, cool. Is he, so if he's running track, I guess he's back to, back to health. I know you guys yeah. are probably buddies with him, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. It's um, great to hear about the group contact, you guys. That sounds terrific. It's a nice way to support each other. You know, everybody like, uh, how do you guys meet up through Zoom? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we Zoom and we have group chats. Um, that's about it. <laughs> you guys, uh, yeah. yesterday or two days ago, uh, you're one of your alumni, Bill Murray, signed with the New England Patriots. Was there a lot of uh, the Barton pride with when you guys saw that? Yeah, that was huge. It was like, I remember watching him play when I was younger, watching him play at the Barton. So that was, that was really cool to see. You don't really see that that often. Yeah, it doesn't happen too often. How about you, coach? You know, from the, from the staff, was that a, you know, was that nice to see? Oh, yeah, it was great. You know, uh, you know, Billy was, a, was an awesome young man when he was on campus. And to see him continue to grow and have that great career and, and have this opportunity in front of him with, you know, arguably one of the best coaches and one of the best uh, franchises in their sport. It's, 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 you know, testament to all the hard work that he's done. Yeah. Yeah. Belichick seems to like those big, big New Jersey, uh, big boys. Uh, I'd be curious to see what he does with them, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. He, well, he's a, he's a good, uh, good evaluator of talent. So hopefully he sees something there in Billy that, uh, you know, will keep him in the league for a while. Yep. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Um, so, Coach, you know, what, what would it be like, you know, are you guys starting to, to talk about, you know, if you are able to go, um, even if it's uh, June, like how, how that schedule might look? Um, there, yeah, there's been, uh, I've had some some conversations with our athletic director, Dan Whalen, and I know the uh, the state is in conversation at the at the conference level, uh, just in terms of, you know, what, what time is allowed. Or allowing us to put together, and, and what you know, what type of schedule it would be. Um, so I, I know they have certain cutoff dates. So I think we're waiting, still waiting to hear from Governor Murphy next week as to um, you know what his recommendation is. I believe it was May 14th that he said he was going to really address schools again. I know he kind of talked about it uh, in the recent, you know, yesterday afternoon or even today's press conference. But um, you know, I think we're still you know holding out hope that you know things improve next week or continue to improve over the next seven days and. Um, you know, then maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel. And then if we can get, uh, you know, four or five, six games, maybe in the, in the Fitch pit conference or in a, from a County perspective, or you know, even a, a non-public perspective, I know there's been a variety of different, uh, you know, conversations about putting a, putting some type of schedule together. Yeah. I mean, if it's, it's oh, that uh, sounds so promising. I love listening to that. It's better, better to be optimistic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's the whole reason why we've been doing this? And we keep, you know, I just said to George, I'm like, what are we going to do if they suddenly say like, okay, that's it, <laughs> you know, um, well, it, would there, kind of, it would kind of be a little bit of a downer on a talk show just because you'd be wanting to continue to honor all you kids, but there wouldn't be a possibility. And right now where there still is hope, you know, that maybe you guys can get out there one more time. And I think like, it's funny, you know, I always think like everybody's afraid of Del Barton, like, oh, you know everybody wants to take you guys down you know it's fun to play del barton but um you know i'm so so proud of you kids you Mm -hmm. know you guys sound like you have super futures ahead of you you know you guys have worked hard and it's really great to hear you guys talk about like playing the game you know you're gonna stay in it you know because not not every kid that we've talked to who's a senior who's moving on has elected to continue to play the sport Mm-hmm. yeah it's great that we can all we're all fortunate enough to uh continue so thank you yeah so, it's, congratulations to all three of you thank you thank you well, listen it's uh it's april 27th right now and uh, a month from now is may 27th and it's open till june 30th so a lot can happen over the next uh several weeks and hopefully murphy doesn't shut it down <laughs> and just keeps that hope alive because uh that'd be just great even get a weekend it would be great yeah definitely you know it's funny we i think every year the boys can attest to this you know you play the the cold games in march and maybe some rainy games in april 
And then, you know, if you're fortunate enough to play past Memorial Day, we have this beautiful weather and uh, more oftentimes practices and games. But, uh, you know, you're right. Hopefully, hopefully we have an opportunity here. We have the great spring weather and we can can enjoy a number of competitions with other schools. Yep, 100 percent. Um, well, hey, coach, we can't thank you enough for go, coming on. And uh, Cole, Tommy and CJ, we really appreciate uh, just giving a chance to know a little bit yeah, about us. Really uh, good still, to see you guys. The Barton lacrosse team. And uh, hopefully we'll see you out there. Um, we're going to wish you luck at the next level anyways. But uh, hopefully we see you out there this year. Well, thank you. Thank you to you both for, for having us on, first of all, and uh, for all you do for, for the athletes in the local area. It's, it's awesome that these guys get this exposure. So, you know, thank you as well. And hope everybody's healthy and safe and continues to be yes, moving forward. Yes, stay safe and well. And thank you so much. Us. Thank you for having guys? us on. Thank yeah, you. our pleasure. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. We'll let you go. Um, and uh, it's really, you know, great to have this, these Del Barton uh, – lacrosse team and give them a to see what they're all about you know it's fun to watch um and, and get to get to know these teams off the field I mean, we get to know, see these guys on the field um uh, but you know I love with the help, hearing about all their success and where they're going yeah 100 percent. i mean you get well, to see these guys these kids, yeah all these kids have a sh no matter what they're doing no matter where they start or where they go it's uh i just love listening to all of them yep uh, yeah me too 100 you know, they all just... sound enthusiastic they all sound like they're trying to stay fit they seem to have like groups of kids together that are honoring each other you know this team though they must have they, they must have a jv team because this whole team's seniors oh yeah they do they do they have a freshman team uh, a jv team what a great oh, group of young men though what a great group of young men didn't you love that they do cut they do yoga on sundays <laughs> hey you know that's that's that what do they say people who pray together stay together whatever you know that's hey hands down right now i would think tons of people are meditating and yoga is a great meditative practice very cool i was thinking they were going to tell me something about weights and running i mean they did as well but what a what a great thing that those kids are doing something good that's a that's good for you for your mind peace of mind yeah peace of mind. And, and they are, you know, warriors on the field. You watch them play, the way they move, how quick, how coached they are. They're so organized and that ball moves around so well. Um, it's really impressive to watch. And there's other, you know, some of the teams we see, like Mendham, Chatham, those are great teams. But when you see, like, the Barton out there, it's just like they're so crisp. Even at the, you know, they have 20 guys. And I guarantee the twentieth one would be the star at whatever public high school he would have gone to. You know what I mean? Um, they're just a tremendous team. And when that we see a team like that, even the private school who you know they're kind of pulling the best athletes from each each school, getting a team to play so well together, you still need the coaching, you still need the organization, and uh, the, what what the Barton has done the last you know forever. And when it comes to lacrosse, is incredible. And they're constantly sending kids to great Scott. You know, one of the things is athlete, athletics is great, right? But you're, we're, we're molding young men here, young men and women. And uh, the fact these kids are going to top tier schools, you know, they're going to go get great educations. And then they're going to pump back into our system and pay taxes and get jobs and all that stuff, you know. So it's a big funnel. Um, so, uh, and lacrosse offers them that opportunity to. So, so tell me something, you know, what was interesting that their coach was saying that they are having conversations about what it looks like if they do start like in June, how um, realistic is it that these kids play for 30 days What, tell me what you think that looks like. Um, so I think the way it'll look like, if it starts before June, so let's say it starts on May 20th. No, I said June 1. Okay, fine. June 1. I think June 1, there's no state playoffs anymore. So it's just going to be um, just a schedule. The way I, I read into it and so what I've talked to is that they'll just have a schedule that they'll play. I don't believe there'll be any kind of playoff unless they'll kind of come up with a, maybe a one day tournament or something, but they're going to be creative. The athletic directors 
the ones, you know, we've talked to a lot of them. They're going to be creative. If they can get out there, they're going to make it so it works. And so the kids can play and uh, I, I, they're going to make I it. I love so it that they're still hanging in there. I, I kind of so said that to that coach today. Cause I was like, does he know a little bit more than we do? You know, I, I assume they may know a little bit more. I, well, even the athletic director, they no one really knows, but they're just preparing in any way that they can loosely. Like he said, you know, Dan Wellen is the athletic director. Um, I'd imagine, I know the athletic directors are all talking together. They're, they're running these little scenarios around, hey, if we have all of June, this is what we're going to try to do. You know, they got to kind of start getting organized in some regard, but they'll, they'll move quick. Everyone that I've said, have talked to, they've all well, we said. We talked to a golf guy. Remember that? We talked to a golf guy two weeks ago. He said we could have 10 matches. Yeah. Easy. I guess they could play 10 games in 30 days. I mean, they could probably pay more. Oh, yeah, they can. Coach, they're, they're like, hey, let's we'll... wait. You know what? You know what else? There's not going to be. There's not going to be academics. To... I, I think there will have to be academics if they're going to go out there. I think they'll have to go back to school. You mean they'll uh, unless... have to continue school until June 30th? Actually, you know what? Maybe Murphy will. You know what would be great if Murphy said. You know what? Stay home with school, but you can play sports. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know how you do that safely and with the buses, and I don't know how you do it. But I think Murphy's holding out there because he's got a senior in high school. Is that true? You know what? I asked somebody. They, uh, I don't they know. No? I, I hope it's. I hope she's an athlete, so he's got a vested interest. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you want to open up safely. You don't want anybody. You don't want. This I thought he. I thought he laid out a really good plan today. Well, it was. It seemed prudent. I mean, everybody's anxious to get out there, and um, uh, it seemed prudent. You don't want anybody to get sick, or you don't want to go backwards. You know, we just spent a month. This is our seventh week. It's not a month. It's over a month and a half. Um, yeah, I can't week. even believe it. Same. It's I just can't really believe it. I didn't ask those kids about mulch. I mean, that's one of my favorite questions. I didn't ask them if they're vacuuming. I didn't ask them if they're telling their mother they love her. Those touch. are very important parts of the interview. <laughs> <laughs> You're losing your touch. Um, and uh, we got a nice little message here on uh, YouTube. Um, Kevin Malkin said, thanks for everything you do. Great stuff to see. And for the athletes, so that's cool. Like Kevin, we're Absolutely just trying to love the athletes. We were both athletes, and you were we an started athlete. this I... such a long time ago. You were an athlete. I was on a team. I like to like put the uniform on, put the eye black on, but I wasn't an athlete. I was just the guy who I was on the team, but I wasn't like the athlete who was doing anything to you help. Loved the team. reading about yourself in the paper. I loved read. I was never in the paper. I loved reading and my seeing my teammates. Well, I would now have you loved made it possible. Now everybody can be seen in any way they want to be seen on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. They can read about themselves on our websites. So we've made it possible so everybody can be looked at. Yeah. We, we need the bands to call us. We need to. Uh, we need to interview a band. Yeah. Well, hey, listen. We're, we got a full week. We got a full week of schedule. We got a. A great lineup for the rest of the week, too. We're going to interview a lot more players and coaches. If anybody listening out there, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get all our YouTube. And we don't just do talk shows. We'll do Zoom. I mean, so if you look back at of our broadcast, we do the live broadcast with, you know, excellent production with all cinematic graphics and all the cool stuff that makes uh, that does it right. You know, we want to cover these kids and do it in a great way. Make, we get, the whole point is to love on these athletes while they're playing sports at this level. So uh, we send them off because right after this time, this is as good as it gets for a lot of these kids. A lot of those kids are going to go on and play, but um, most high school athletes are not. They're going to go out and start going towards their vocation, whatever that is. So it's important that we love on these kids as much as possible when they're in our, when they're playing sports in our area. And that's what we do with our job as more assistant sports our job is to love on them through great coverage and uh, we can't do it with the support of all the people that uh, tune in and listen to us and sponsors and all that kind of stuff. 
So uh, thank you so much for having me today, George. <laughs> thank you for having being part of this. I couldn't do it without you. <laughs> All right. So listen, Karen, great show. Week seven. Um, I love these shows because we get to do this together and meet a ton of people. But I'm hoping that we get back to sports and I'm sure we will at some point at, at, in the future. So I just want to let everybody know, uh, thank you for joining us again. Don't forget to subscribe. And this broadcast is being made possible for you from a few people. One is St. Francis Residential Community in Denver. Oh, what a great it's spot. A great place for your elder care people. It's not a, uh, you know, it's it. a, you know, it's a great way to like finish. It's such a great community for the older population. It's not a nursing home. It's just like a great residential area. Uh, mm -hmm. Bark's Bed and Biscuit. You want to take a break oh my god your, i love them too drop your dog off at bark's bed and is she open and she just opened they just opened and uh, allowed her to be open so she's back in business so you gotta send your dog there for a day day off a day to have fun with other dogs and get get a haircut and whatever dogs do at dog grooming places uh guarantee your dog will smile because they always send those pictures and i also need to let you know that this broadcast is made possible to you by who Professional OINJ. OINJ. CCM. Ivy yeah. Rehab Hawk Graphics. Oh, Brent, where are you? I got to talk to you. <laughs> All right, listen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Karen. I love you. And um, we'll see you tomorrow. See you next time. All right. Bye bye.